So uh, what we're going to do while you guys can all find seats, we're going to quickly, uh, we're going to screen something for you that you may have seen already, but if you haven't, it's really inspiring, and it's going to make everybody feel real good. Josh, are you in the room? Josh Bogdan, are you here? If you're here, wave. Jump up and down. Or not. Okay, so uh, we're going to uh, screen this uh, quick uh, nine-minute mini-documentary that will lift your heart, and we're going to get things going. And this is a cue for you folks in the back to pay attention and uh, bring it down a couple of notches. Okay, folks? Here we go. You know I do a lot of my painting with my eyes shut. I jumped up out of bed and went to the computer to see if I could uh, do what I dreamed I could do. People now generally call me Grandpa. Why is that? Because I'm old and that's what I am. Grandpa is what they call a lettering man, uh, which means he was a typographer. A typographer's job is to create uh, letter forms by scratch. So you're literally hand drawing A through Z and creating these spec sheets that eventually get used in layouts in uh, advertising and greeting cards and posters and etc. We got Grandpa a computer probably 15 years ago. I knew I had to show him uh, Microsoft Paint, and once I did, he just he took off with it. And uh, it wasn't until years later that we realized how important this this thing was was to him. Uh, when I lost my eyesight, I thought my, that my painting days were over. The reason I'm using the computer is different because I'm using it because it gives me the benefit of magnifying enough so that my eyesight is good enough that I can still do it. This is, was one of my first drawings on the, on the computer. So I figure out what I want to do first when it's normal size and then I just bring up that part and I work on the detail of that only. See, if it takes me two years to do that, I can spend it. I got a lot of patience. That's what you really need anyway, so. Hi, Bob. Hey, Hal. I got a, I got a new print that I'm just starting. It's uh, Space Highways. It started out with just one thing, he had no idea how to get it out of the computer. And then once we figured out what he exactly wanted, he would bring more and more and more things in. It was, a, it was a growing relationship that really turned out well. You can see the actual pixels, the, the squares in the, in the paintings. Um, most people want those gone. Hal wants those kept. Hal won't go away. So <laughs> he's coming back for more. Seven. You mean I gotta blow those up? You do. Yeah, oh, There's you only two. You got to make a wish. Yeah, make a I wish first. Practice. Deep, Deep breath. breath. Deep breath. <laughs> Grandpa, <laughs> make a wish. Okay. <laughs> Way! He will talk to you about art for longer than you want to listen to him. Sometimes he talks about it in his sleep. I don't like to go to his studio downstairs because because I I can't get out. He just keep he just wants to keep me there, wants to keep showing me things, which is fine. I, I just I got two things going and I, I I'm starting a third one now. Oh. And I like this one a lot. Tell though. me about it. It's called Space Highways. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big 
<laughs> I'm, I, this is a small statement about a big subject. <laughs> you know, it's no longer work, it's fun. When I, when I worked, I always had to, had to do something to please the client. So now you can have your own creative freedom. Now I can do whatever I want, you know. Do you think about your paintings a lot? That's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> I got interested in trees when I used to caddy. All year long they change color and everything. Yeah. And then I had a third grade teacher that she taught me a poem. This is poetry. You remember it from way back then? Oh yes. Uh, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts its leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. Poems are made by fools like me. I always say paintings were made by fools <laughs> like me, and only God can make a tree. I'm interested in public reaction to anything that I've done, negative or positive. See, uh, in me and painting in my room, nobody ever sees what I really do. I mean, I think he's getting stronger, not weaker. Actually, since my mom died a couple years ago, he doesn't really talk much about her. I mean, I think he is, is able to um, just go on. I mean, I think he's a... I, I've never heard him complain about his age or... about dying at all. He doesn't have that in him. Okay, guys, it's not often that we do something like that, but that was pretty hard-hitting, don't you think? Good stuff. Uh, Josh is in the house here. He was the filmmaker, and if you want to corner him, where are you again? You keep disappearing, Josh. He's here somewhere. There he is. Thank you. Thank you for the inspiration. Good stuff. Okay, so uh, we have, look at this, big clipboard full of stuff. Um, I'm going to keep the announcements short and sweet, and let's get rolling with the program. Big thanks to our sponsors, LeClaire Ryan, awesome law firm, Outlook.com, awesome solution for your email woes. Give up Gmail for Microsoft. Let's do it. Uh, no, but these guys, what's great about what these guys, the engineers are actually here, and if you have some feature requests, 
you might find it in the product in a couple of weeks. Um, and that's no lie. So these guys actually are listening. That's why they're here tonight. Uh, so thank you to Outlook. We love you. Um, I want to uh, thank Founder Dating. Where's uh, Ronita? Are you in the house? Ronita, come on up, come on up, come on up. So uh, Partners in Crime to a certain extent, uh, awesome organization called Founder Dating, which you may or may not heard of. Uh, Ronita is going to tell you a little bit something about what they've just launched in a very, very short, concise way. I am. Thanks so much. Um, hi, guys. My name is Renithia Williams. Really excited to be here. Thanks to Miles and team for having us. Um, so who are we, Founder Dating? We're the premier online network for entrepreneurs to find their co-founders. Um, and I'd actually take it a step back. It's maybe you're just looking to start a side project. Um, and what you come to Founder Dating for is to find the right person. Um, so we're high quality. We screen every single application that comes through and actually turn away over half of the folks who apply. Uh, we keep it balanced. We're 50% engineers, 50% non-engineers. We have great reach. So we're in 23 cities in US, Canada, Israel, and the UK. Um, and you know, you come to us because you're ready to get started. And if you guys have any questions, I'll be here. Um, we actually have an, a San Francisco deadline coming up August 7th. So if you are interested, remember that, August 7th. Um, but Happy to answer any questions and connect with you guys. Um, so thanks so much. We're excited to be here and look forward to seeing you guys on Founder Dating. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you. Founderdating.com, yes? Yes. OK. Uh, all right, guys. So uh, for those of you who have been here before, you know how it goes. Uh, what we do is we like to curate a, a, an amazing night of uh, inspiring technology for you to uh, engage with. And the way it works is they, they give a live presentation. There's a strict no PowerPoint rule. Uh, and then we have five minutes for a Q&A. The only thing I'm going to ask of you guys, aside from asking great questions, is to keep the noise down in the back. I know it's really tempting to talk. I know you're doing deals or getting jobs or whatever you might be doing back there. That's awesome. But take your conversations in the side or outside or in the side room. Also in the side room, you will find a fully stocked bar or semi-stocked bar, a bar nonetheless. Uh, so the bar in the back, the bartender is gone, he's in the side room. So go feel free to go get a cocktail back there and have your conversations back there as well. Okay, so part of our summer reading series, this is the second in a series that we're doing, kind of ad hoc but fun. Uh, we invited... Uh, All right. Agreed, let's stop deforestation. Uh, this is the jungle bird who uh, purchased himself in vicarious places someplace, uh, in some places to uh, make a statement. And uh, he's doing a lot of good hard work to uh, prevent deforestation in the rainforest, places like Honduras or whatnot. Uh, support the jungle bird. Um, find him, he's wearing an awesome uh, Union Jack uh, mohawk a hat. Uh, and uh, you guys might have seen him as part of the PGA, what was it, the, the US Open, uh, coming up and uh, doing the same call uh, in front of Bob Costas, and didn't make him that happy, did it? Uh, good stuff, so Andrew, thank you, thank you for that, but don't do that again. No. <laughs> okay, uh, so hey, where are our friends, uh, Mr. Scoble and Mr. Israel, are you guys here? Come on up. Here are two guys that you've probably never heard of. We found these guys out around the corner. Uh, and rumor has it that you're writing a book. Let me give you a mic. I'm going to go get another microphone. So you have two microphones. Let's hear what you're working on, guys. Him first. This is the you? first. Who are you? <laughs> Who the hell are you? <laughs> here, move over in the light. Over here. I, I, I can, light. I can see go. the light. OK. Um, <laughs> Robert Scoble, you know, I'm the other guy. Uh, and we've been working for about a year now on a book called Age of Context. I think we finally settled on a subtitle, which is how mobile um, sensors and data will change your life. Um, we're looking at five actually, uh, converging forces of technology, you know them already, mobile, social media, data sensors, and location-based technologies. 
We spent a year or so far talking to over a thousand people. Um, it's a story that people in this room know a lot about the technology of it. We've looked for the stories that will be compelling to the rest of the eight billion people on Earth. Um, and we thank you all for being the source that this is about, and we hope we tell the story of technology pretty well. Robert? And, and we're here to make sure we hear any of the latest bleeding edge stuff, because we have a couple of weeks left of writing, and uh, we can still get stuff in the book. And you guys are the ones who the rest of the world is going to be uh, following. So some of the things that we've been seeing is uh, how sensors are changing wearable computers. This is a sensor platform from Google that's coming out next year. It knows where I'm looking. It knows where my eye is looking. It knows which way my head is turned, right? It comes on if I look up, right? Um, when, when did you get that Twitch? Uh, you know, three months ago. It's, a, <laughs> it's the Saturday Night Live Twitch. Um, and so we visited General Motors and Toyota and Oakley and uh, uh, wineries in Napa. I went to the largest ski resort in Aspen, and we, we went around the world to find out how these new technologies are going to change business and, and people's lives. We, we, we talked to people in healthcare, not the healthcare officials who are still doing what they used to do, but people are making sensors that you can take and eliminate invasive tests. Mothers who are tired of their kids not getting the right treatment with diabetes and asthma and how technology is empowering them to do things that will make their, the quality of their children's lives better. So, some things we're, we're noticing is um, for, for people this has two impacts. One, we're going to get very personalized product. This product, if, Peter, if you put on my Google Glass, you see my email, my stocks, my calendar, my sports teams, and, and on and on. It's very personalized to who I am. And when you get yours, yours will be personalized to who you are. Um, and we're seeing, General Motors talked about this, that you're going to have a 3D sensor in General Motors cars soon that will recognize that you're sitting in the passenger seat and do things for you. Turn on your favorite Spotify uh, music or, or change the settings of the air conditioning system to who you are or even watch your eyes and see that you're falling asleep as you're driving down the road and wake you up. So there's safety concern things that are gonna come in with these sensor platforms as well. Uh, so personalized thing is one thing. It's also gonna um, uh, let us have very assistive technologies. The, the code name for Google Glass was Wingman because it is trying to assist me. So when I walk into an airport like I did last week, it puts my plane ticket up in the glass so I know what time the, the plane is leaving, uh, when is it's leaving, where is my gate number. And this is really cool when you're dragging two, two suitcases through an airport and you don't have uh, the, the phone ready uh, to look at. There's a couple of things that all of the stuff we talk about seems to keep coming back to. One is people and their technology are going to get uncannily close together. And that creates some very freaky aspects that we're going to talk about. Got a whole chapter on privacy, which is the elephant in the book, I would say. Uh, the second thing is that technology is going to know our patterns and know our habits well enough to predict what we're going to do next. Yeah. In fact, I got one tonight. Who's the developer for MileMe? Is he here? I know he's here because he gave me the app. Anyways, they're hiding in the dark. It's out watching. There. It's now watching my cell phone's pattern, so it knows when I took trips and it builds a uh, expense form for uh, my expenses about uh, mileage, right? And that that's the kind of thing I'm seeing. It, the, the other thing that that's happening because because of all these five trends it, is business is going to really. Um, uh, be, have a, you're going to have, if you're in business, you're going to have a very complete idea of what's going on in your business to the point you're going to need to know predictively what your inventory tonight needs to be. In fact, the bar could have used our behaviors to know that they better stock up on some whiskey because I like whiskey. And, <laughs> right? I didn't know you liked whiskey. I do like whiskey. We're supposed to stop talking. Right okay, one, one more question. Um, and so if you guys have questions, I, we'll take, to, take them, right? Just one or two? Oh.
Okay, guys. There, there's a second thing that's happening to business, and that is um, that business is um, not just going to have a perfect idea of who you uh, of of their business. Like Uber knows every transaction, every customer, all on their mobile phone, but they're also going to know you very deeply. I just interviewed uh, Aaron from MindTouch, and he built a customer uh, support system that HTC and and Remington Guns they're using, and they really track everything you do both on the website and when you call up, they know you in much deeper detail and when, when they get to that point, then they can make the leap to being able to support you but just by talking to a system and it's gonna be pretty amazing. So, hands up if you have questions. The only request is let's not ask should, how should, glass works. Are you, are you going to recognize people or should we just? Uh, I, well, I've got a microphone. Is somebody him, down so. here who's the only one we can see with his hand up. Got it. Or it was a, there you go. Hi. Uh, you guys were touching earlier on um, the elephant in the room, which was privacy. Um, and yeah. you have a whole chapter dedicated to that. Could you give us a little um, you know, taste of what you discuss in the book? Well, I can do it in one sentence. Um, your technology is going to know all about you. There's a lot of talk about Google Glass and what you can see. Well, that gets silly because if he went into a restroom <laughs> and wanted to photograph something that he wasn't supposed to photograph, he would have to steer down in a certain area and a little light would go off and you'd hear a ding. And I would fear for Robert's life. But on the other hand, <coughs> on the other hand, <coughs> Google knows what he's looking at whenever he has that on. There is a sensor that is recording the data of everything he looks at. Yeah. I just wanted to finish the sentence. Oh, well, you said, you said it. Inside, there's a 16 by 16 eye sensor, right? And it's watching your eye where you're looking. And it has not been exposed as to what it's doing. But it is watching me full time. So who owns that data is what concerns us. And even if, like Robert and I, we have a lot of respect for the people that run Google today. But who will run it 20 years from today? And can this be used by the NSA? Well, I think we know the answer to that. What about police and investigation? We probably know the answer to that. What about in a spousal, dis a spousal dispute when a husband and wife, one may be questioning where the other was one night? Can it be subpoenaed for that reason? These are unanswered questions. We conclude to room the mystery, that there's so much wonderful stuff coming, so much transformative stuff to our lives that it's worth it. But we try to say there are going to be some unintended consequences. There are some unanswered questions. There's a lot of nuance and complexity to how it'll shake out. I, you know, my, my wife wears a Fitbit, and she wears it in bed often. Uh, I have... <laughs> Think about the data on that one. <laughs> uh, I have a sleep sensor that's monitoring my sleep now. I just got it last week. I have a Fitbit scale that's you know reporting how how fat I am, um, on and on and on. And th these sensors are getting so good. Uh, we saw a, a PrimeSense sensor from uh, Israel, which is a 3D sensor that they they made the sensor that um, or they made the technology that the Microsoft Connect uses. But now it's sharper, it's lower latency, it's cheaper. I just saw, heard about another company coming out of Israel that's going to make an even sharper and higher, higher quality sensor for less than $10. So General Motors, when they say they're going to put four of these 3D sensors in your car, that's very affordable for them, and it won't add a lot to the cost of the car, and it'll add a lot of utility. But that thing is doing massive stuff. It, you, you know that Xbox One, this, this ball, is going to be able to see your heart rate by looking at you. So it can tell how good you're engaging with their games, right? And more. You, you, your home is going to be completely filled with sensors. Philips has a sensor going into a toothbrush that when you brush will know where you have a cavity and will send it... Uh, uh, an SMS message to your dentist. Appliances are going to connect to each other. We found 
going to, we wrote about three, but I think we found six companies that have ways to do the holy grail of television. Find something that might interest you. But to do that, it has to understand your patterns and what you like to watch. Some companies will allow Scoble to keep the secret and not share with his Facebook friends that he has a passion I for army secrets. wives. <laughs> I have secrets? <laughs> But to answer the question, though, and we, we should take one last question and then get off the stage because our time's running out. Yeah. We're going to see a, a new world of... Uh, oh, we're already out. Uh, yeah, we don't leave easily. <laughs> Shutting Scoble up is hard. Uh, we're going to see a new era of have and have-nots. Not rich ha and poor, but people who are willing to give their lives over to the system to get new experiences in life. Sort of like we all chose to get a Safeway uh, loyalty card, right? And use it to get $2 off a bottle of wine or $3 off a, a package of a hamburger meat, right? Um, the new world is where there's going to be people like me who are going to totally dive into the system and give it everything. And there's going to be people who don't want to do that. And they're going to be at a disadvantage in the next society that's coming up. That's when we'll put the chips in them, and then that'll be fine. Coming, I, 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 you know, I, I just hung out this weekend. I, this book, I mean, I, you know, we, it goes on and on. This week, weekend, I was hanging out with brain, uh, brain uh, scientists, surgeons, who are already putting probes into people's brains to change their behavior. They showed me a, 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 a patient that had Parkinson's, and he couldn't hold his hand still. He turned on the probe, his hand went still. It's amazing stuff, and think about where that's going to lead in 20, 30, 40 years. It's a, it's a really freaky world to me. We, we found a lady who is using brain waves to get an artificial hand. She, oh, she has no arms. And she uses an artificial hand to do things for her. I asked her what was the first thing she asked her to do. She had it reach for chocolate and feed her. Good for her. Right on. We can talk all night, but the book is out in October. Why don't we? <laughs> book is out in October. Uh, and, and we'd love we'd love to uh, you know get early feedback from this audience because you yeah. guys know more about technology than any other audience in the world. So if you if you write me on Facebook or uh, better be at Gmail, Scobalizer at Gmail, uh, we'll we'll figure out how to get you the early PDFs of what's been edited already and see what you guys think. Awesome. We'll share it. What do you think, Scoble and Israel? Thank yes. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, I'll take it. Oh, they made a good Thank you. All right. There's a crazy uh, bulldog running around. It's gonna be one of those nights. Um, okay, guys. Uh, I failed to mention. So the hashtag tonight is SFNT. If you haven't figured it out, it's a, it is on your name badge. Uh, and we have a tweet wall that we're gonna. Uh, Try to work. It's kind of up and down. But if you tweet, you might find yourself on the big screen. Also, we're streaming this event live tonight, so feel free to invite others in the room with us. They just have to visit sfnewtech.com. Okay, so let's get going with the presentations. Where is uh, Andrew Fogg from import.io? Andrew, come on up and let's get, this, uh, let's get the demos going. Andrew's the founder and chief data officer. So yeah, folks in the bar, we're going to ask for your respect. That's what all this is about. I'm going to come pay you a visit in just a second. So, Andrew, whenever you're ready, we'll start the clock. Hello. My name's Andrew, and I'm a founder at Import.io. There is lots of data on the web, but getting data from the web is, is kind of difficult. You have two choices. You can write a web scraper, which looks a bit like this, uh, or you can use an API, which looks a little bit like this. Uh, both require developers that look a bit like this. 
This is a, a developer-approved pitch for a developer. Some of our engineers gave this to me. Imagine if you could turn any website into a spreadsheet or an API without writing any code. That's what we do. I could build one of these for you right now, but um, it takes about five minutes, and I'm running out of time. I'm going to show you with some pictures. It's a web browser. Uh, this is a web page with property data on it. I'm going to teach it where the rows of data are by selecting them in the browser. Uh, it learns where all the rows are and highlights them. Um, I can add some columns for the data that I want to extract. And in order to get data from the web page into the data table, I select an example of an address and click to add it to the table. All the addresses are extracted. I can do the same for images and price, and I've turned a web page into a table of data. I can use this extractor with a crawler and get all the data from the site. I can teach it how to navigate a website as well. I click record, I do a search, and it records all my interactions with the site. Everything's available over an API, um, and I've just built an API to someone else's website without writing any code. Here's the JSON and the API endpoint, which is pretty powerful. Um, but let me talk about use cases. So the British Red Cross wanted to build an iPhone application. And they wanted data from the National Health Service. But there's no API for this website. So they built a connector. And they now have this data in their iPhone application. Enter a zip code, get data. HP, sell laptops via channel partners like Amazon, Dabs, and Play.com. The channel partners should observe MRP, minimum retail price, but sometimes they're a bit naughty, and they'll discount for a day, steal all the sales from the other channel partners, and then put the price back up. Nothing to see here. Um, so HP have extractors for all their partners' websites, and this spreadsheet is kept up to date with live price data from the web. Robert Half, final one, big recruitment firm. Uh, they're focused on the top 4,000 companies in the USA. Uh, and when one of their clients, what they want to do is when one of their clients posts a job vacancy on the careers page of their own website, Robert Half want that job to appear in Salesforce so that this guy can do his job and close the deal. They tried writing web scrapers to do this. Imagine writing 4,000 web scrapers. Every website is different. Uh, how much do you think that would cost? Estimates vary from a million, $250. You do it on offshore, maybe. Do it onshore, Jobs for America, $1,000 each, maybe about $4 million. We have a team in India that used Import.io, and they built 4,000 connectors in two weeks for $1,000. Because remember, it's point and click. No developers required. Sorry, guys. We love you guys. And we think you can be doing better things with your time than writing web scrapers. I have a minute to go. Import.io is data for everybody. All right. Thank you, Andrew. I like your PowerPoint there, buddy. I was 60 slides in four minutes. Not too bad. That's almost animated. OK. Uh, hands up high. Questions? So you, I don't think you talked about your price point for the regular regular guy. How do, like, so at the moment, it's all free. Um, it's free to use. And the stage of the business we're at at the moment is in a kind of discovery stage. We're working with some big guys, like the ones I mentioned. We're working with some smaller startups as well. And we're in a kind of like discovery phase, trying to work out uh, with the problems that we might be able to solve. Um, it's going to cost one at some point, but that's uh, at some point in the future. What about uh, the legal or copyright issues? Uh, legal copyright issues um, are that this is no different than uh, what's being done today. Um, basically, we're giving you a capability. And um, what we, when we started this business, we tried to, we basically, any, we're very transparent about the fact that we're hitting uh, data providers, you know, web, the fact that we're hitting people's websites, we identify ourselves to them because in the sort of slightly longer term, 
we think we've got the opportunity to solve a problem for people with websites because everybody is scraping everyone else's website. Um, everyone knows this. And the problem for someone who's got a website is um, they don't know what's going on with their data. So if you see us pop, it, pop up in your logs, uh, you can come to our website, you can claim the connectors that have been built to your website, and you can say, stop this, and we will. But we will ask you the question, are you sure you want us to stop it? Because uh, if you f block us, which we will do for you, um, if, but if you block us, the, those people who are using your data through our platform will go back to what they were doing yesterday, which is writing web scrapers, uh, which can guarantee you'll be heavier on your servers and uh, you, they will continue to pollute your Google Analytics. What we're trying to do with import um, is provide some kind of insight for the data owner uh, into who's using their data. So the user has to come to you to say stop versus there being a way for them to manually exclude you via some sort of like robot.txts? Uh, we give the data, so that we, we kind of see the world in terms of people who have data and people who want data. And at the moment, we're focused on giving the power to the data user, the person who wants data, and they can observe robots.txt if they choose to. And is that the protocol? Sorry? Is that, will that stop your spider, the robot.txt? Yeah. Yeah. If they if they elect to do so. But, uh. Got it. All right, guys, raise your hand. I'm not the only one with questions tonight. Is, so is, is there a, a JSON endpoint that gets generated also, or is it just like grab it, like copy and paste or something? Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, um, you mentioned there was like a JSON you could generate from? So uh, every, everything that you build on the platform is available over an API. So okay. it's a, there's a REST API and a messaging API, Thanks. and it all comes back in JSON. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. How are your pipes? Is it different from tomato? I've not heard of tomato, I'm afraid, but I'll check it out. Tomato. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, a minute 20 on the clock. Who's got a question? No questions, we'll just move on. I, I've got one. You hiring? We what? Are you hiring folks? Are we hiring? Yeah. We're always hiring good people. That's, That's true, it's true. If you, if you believe in the mission, what we're doing, we will definitely come talk to us. That's a good answer. So uh, round of applause for Andrew from import.io. Thank you. Thank you. I like it. OK, next up is uh, Gil Lassadis. He's the CEO of Licenserio. And Gil, whenever you're ready, we'll start the clock. Hello. Hey. Um, so welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Uh, my name is Gil, and I'm here to present uh, Licensario, which is a smart billing solution for SaaS companies. Uh, a year ago, I was here in SF New Tech, and I saw Stripe demonstrating how easy it is to accept payments for developers. Licensario took it a step forward, and I'll show you how easy it is not only to accept payments, but also building your pricing model and dealing with all the issues of billing for software companies. I'll start off uh, with a few slides, if you pardon me. Um, I just want to do a short recap of the billing solutions today and show you how, how different Licensario is. So billing and payment solutions today, they are plan-based. It means that what they care about is the credit card of the user, and the, the price of the plan. The vendor, the SaaS vendor, is uh, left with translating what this transaction means to the business. Which features and resources may the user use in the software? This is the feature provisioning part, the licensing. And this means that for every new package that the software vendor wants to add, he needs to implement and go through all the development cycles in order to support this package. And this goes to every single thing that he wants to do with his pricing, 
like creating new packages, new promotions, pricing A-B tests, and so on. And now imagine that you can take any feature set of the software, package it any way you want, using any pricing model, without changing a single line of code. This is what Licensario is all about, giving software companies maximum amount of flexibility with their pricing. Show you how easy it is to get on board with Licensario and start using it. Um, so Licensario is built on top of, uh, of gateways like Stripe and, and more, so all you need to do in order to get started is connect. Ah, you just, you don't see the screen. <laughs> Hopefully now you'll see it. So all you need to do is just connect your Stripe account. If you're using a different gateway, you can configure that later. I'll just log in to, uh, to a demo account and show you, go, walk you through the process. So what you need to do first is define your features, and to each feature you get a unique ID, a feature ID, which is used for the integration. And then you can bundle uh, those features into pricing plans. Well, it's a bit slow. We'll create, a, we'll create a pricing plan, and I'll show you how easy it is. You just select the features that you want to add to this package. Features can be unlimited or they can be quantified, like 1,000 emails in this package. You, you put a, an awesome name for this plan, and you choose the pricing model. We support various pricing models from subscription to usage-based payment trial, freemium, whatever you want to do with your software. For this demo, let's go with Pay As You Go, which is a really cool model. It's basically a subscription. Uh, let's choose a monthly subscription. I'm going to add trial period for this subscription. And what's great about it is that you don't need to limit your users into uh, just 1,000 emails in this, uh, in this uh, scenario. You can say that if they exceed that, they will pay $1 uh, for each email that they uh, used on top of the, the 1,000. So we, use, we uh, support the invoicing as well, so the user gets automatically the invoice, and uh, it gets all the prices and usage over there. So let me show you how, how it looks from the user's point of view. Uh, we supply a pricing page template. You can use that, or you can use your own UI if you want. Uh, it's that flexible, so here you can see all the packages you created. And we support, we take care of all the checkout process. You can just send it from the credit card. If I would have configured PayPal, you would have seen PayPal as well in this checkout. Um, then you can just manage your customers. You can see exactly which features they use and how much they used it. You can open up new features. You can give them more usage, see all the transactions, licenses, everything. Our API is pretty straightforward. Really easy to connect. Uh, just go to doc.licensario.com and, uh, and I'll just leave you with our awesome dashboard. We track all the KPIs, all the metrics that SaaS companies care about from conversion rate to churn rate, lifetime value, everything. You can get this dashboard for free if you'll connect to your Stripe account, so go ahead, do that. You will also get a, a really cool weekly report, so go ahead and connect your Stripe accounts. That's it. Thank you. I, I actually have uh, free t-shirts for everyone who asks a question. I'll just bring my, uh, <laughs> my bag with t-shirts. Good deal. I like that. Start throwing uh, t-shirts. Who wants a free t-shirt? Who's got a question? You guys are quiet tonight. Is it me? So, so uh, what, these are the, you know, you're so, uh, identifying uh, an interesting pain point here, and I'm just curious, like, what customers and like what people inspired you to build this? Um, actually, it started from a uh, frustration we had as software consumers, and it started actually from desktop software, uh, Adobe Photoshop. Uh, when we started thinking about this idea two and a half years ago, Adobe Photoshop was priced in uh, $1,000 per license. And it made, it made no sense for us, even if you wanted it to, for a week or a month or whatever, you needed to pay $1,000. Uh, now Adobe have more flexible uh, pricing models. Uh, so we started investigating this, uh, this domain, billing and licensing, and we found out that it's mostly outdated uh, solutions. And this is what made it real. Now uh, we're focusing on SaaS and cloud services. 
Um, for those that aren't using Stripe, how easy is it for them to connect their billing through that? Um, I don't see where the question came from, so Maz, you will be the, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, we support uh, different gateways. Uh, we're adding support for Braintree right now. We support PayPal. Uh, we, uh, we also support PayMill, if you know. It's a kind of the European clone for uh, Stripe. Um, does that answer your question? I'm on this side of the room, you guys. I know you have questions. Anybody else in the back? In the back. Yes, sir. How do you handle the whole dunning process when people don't pay or their credit card fails or so on? Uh, yeah, sure. Just catch up. Catch one? <laughs> um, yeah, sure. We do all the dunning management. We have, I'll show you the email templates that we you could uh, just customize. They are happening for, uh, uh, we send them for every, for each event that uh, happens in the, in the, uh, in the system. So this is just an invoice template that you can uh, totally customize. And the same goes for, uh, for dunning management and uh, trial expiration uh, and notifications. And we have webhooks for everything that's happening in the, in the system. So you can manage it yourself and don't depend on our system to do that. Depends on you. Do you plug into accounting software? Sorry? Do you plug into accounting software like a QuickBooks or Quicken? Uh, this is something in the roadmap, yeah, definitely. And Salesforce and uh, marketing automation tools, yeah, a lot of uh, integrations. How many companies are using uh, the product? And did you cover pricing? I'm sorry if I missed that. Um, yeah, so uh, the product was just, uh, we just uh, opened it for, uh, for usage. Uh, there are 10 active companies that, uh, that use it. We have more than 200 companies that enter the beta, so we're kind of uh, getting them on board right now. We'd, we're charging 1% of each transaction that goes through our system. Um, as simple as that, no other fees. Authorized.net? Um, still not supported. Um, if, if, if we will have a large customer that uh, will pay us for the integration, you know. <laughs> do, do I get a t-shirt? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> just I've got a few more t-shirts. Just want to clarify. You can just ask me how, 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 how am I doing, and it's, you know. I just want to clarify. You'll get a t-shirt. That's 1% on top of the Stripe uh, transaction fee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> I think so oh, I, I have another one. I'm from Israel. Uh, yeah, our R&D system, our r &D department is in Israel. I'm trying to be here as much as I can. Being close to the customers is important. Um, yeah. Okay, one more question. Uh, hi, to your uh, Photoshop point, is it possible to integrate it from the desktop software as well or just cloud or do you have any security mechanisms that possibly desktop applications could use to authorize, I don't know, a trial mode or extension of subscription, things like that? Uh, yeah, so uh, actually we started from desktop software and kind of shifted pretty quick to SaaS. Uh, it's kind of a hard, uh, difficult uh, go-to market. But yeah, if, if you will integrate from a desktop software, it will work. Uh, we're not saying that we're supporting that, supporting that just for uh, focus issues, but it will work, yeah, for mobile as well. I think we're out of time. Yeah. Licencio. <laughs> and I didn't even get a damn T-shirt. Um, all right, next up. That's all right. I'll get mine on eBay. Uh, Next up is uh, Austin from Grasswire. And we first met Austin in Salt Lake City when we visited that fine city a couple of months back as part of our new tech tour. And uh, was very impressed. So here's Austin presenting for you all here in San Francisco. Now Austin, as you're plugging in, let me ask you quickly, are you, s are you relocating or just visiting or? Yeah, so we've been out here for the summer, um, and we're headed back for a little bit, um, for about a year. Uh, I've got, I'm getting married, and then we've got some school to finish up, 
and then we'll probably be heading out this way. So, got it. All right. So whenever you're ready, we'll start the clock for Grasswire. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So we are Grasswire, and the the name comes from Grassroots Newswire. Uh, so what we do is we let everyday people create a news report by voting on and fact-checking social media in real time. So the news is kind of getting really close to this tipping point where finally we're getting information from everyday people instead of from corporations and governments, and that's really, really important. Um, but the problems are that one, that information is really difficult to find, and two, it's even harder to, verif to verify that information. Um, so GrassWire solves both of those problems. I don't know why it's not up. Uh, gosh dang it. Where are you? All right, we did this before. Hey guys. It's in there. Nope. Gosh dang it. One second, guys. <laughs> Fixing it, fixing it. Oh, thanks guys for stopping it. Okay. Utah. I'm from Southern California, <laughs> actually. <laughs> hey guys. Okay, we're good. Uh, almost. Right on. Awesome. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So the idea is that we let everyday people. Um, vote on and fact check social media content in real time and by doing so create a news report that's accessible to everybody. Um, so here we have some sample data from when we parsed the Boston Marathon, marathon bombings and um, that aftermath. Um, so in this lane right here, um, that's Twitter. So that pulls in Twitter, Twitter photos, Vine um, for the hashtag that the user puts in. Um, this is media, so that will be Instagram, YouTube, and that flows in real time. The parser's turned off right now, um, but if it were on, then you would see these kind of flowing, and as soon as any new information comes into those APIs, you would see it here. Um, we've already highlighted this one, um, and this is our highlights column. So this is basically saying, of all of that data, this is the best stuff. Um, so basically users, by watching all of the data come in, they can say, this is the best content for that given event. Um, so that's pretty cool, but what's really cool is what we can do after the fact. Um, so we have this summary view. So this is some of the data from the Boston Marathon that, so this one right here was the tweet that had the most highlights or the most likes, um, and so on and so forth. So we can show it to a bunch of users, get that data back, and then say, hey, this is the best data. So it's almost like a Reddit plus a Storify, if that makes sense. Um, and then you can go to this view, and you can see oldest first. So if you want to go from the very beginning of the event to today, you can kind of scroll down and understand that story. Um, and newest first is the same idea, um, but that updates in real time. So as people that are watching the fast lane that we looked at earlier are favoriting stuff, um, this shows up, and it's dynamic, so you never have to refresh anything. Um, so that's basically the idea, um, but some of the ramifications that we've seen are really cool. Uh, we launched GrassWire on accident, kind of. We just put a link in a Hacker News thread. Um, we, it was just Fastlane at the time, but we had 6,000 users the first day, um, and then the next day we had 10,000 users, and it just kept growing so that we had to kind of shut it down so we could actually build it to scale. Um, it was just kind of our minimum viable product at the time. Um, but what that does, is if we click on the detail view, um, let's do this one here, um, you can really interact with that piece of data. We have comments, um, fact checks, um, you can highlight it, you can share it, and sharing it brings you right back to this page 
um, so that you can see, oh, there's this piece of data, and then the best stuff will load behind that. Um, so really, the, the power behind it is that it's news that some kid in the ghetto in the Bronx can influence just as much as the Queen of England can. Um, and we think that that's really powerful, that by bringing people together in the same place, you can create um, news that's more compelling and more interesting than anything else out there. Um, and another really cool thing is that if there's a breaking international event, we can have an entire news organization on it in one click. So we can spin up, an, spin up another instance, and uh, we've been watching some of the, the Egypt and things like that. Um, so it's almost like an instant newsroom. Um, and I think that's my time. So Austin, how is this different from like setting a, up a Google alert on you know certain things and tying in a hashtag and just having a feed of stuff that way? Uh -huh. So first of all, um, the reason Fastlane took off so well is because it's it's real time. So you can just sit there and literally watch a news event as it develops. Um, but even more importantly than that is as everything's coming in. So as you're watching that fire hose, you're getting the best content out of it. Um, so you can see with one glance, hey, this is the most interesting stuff for this story. And you know that it's been fact-checked by other people just like you. So that you know, even CNN is watching Twitter and they have interns that feed CNN the wrong information all the time. Um, but we kind of crowdsource that fact-checking right along with the content aggregation. Yeah. Have we what? Yeah, so we, we've talked to a few local news agencies, and they've kind of been drooling over it. Um, basically, the smaller news agencies, their biggest problem right now is they can't get people s to stay on their page. Um, so if we, showed, if we sold them a license to the user side of it, um, then they would be very interested in that. We're not sure if that's something we want to do quite yet. Um, as far as have we talked to Reuters or AP, no, we haven't um, talked to anybody kind of to use it on the back end. But I'm sure there's potential there. So, Oh, yeah. So there's a company called Demotics. Um, and what they do is they take the photos, the top photos from events, they get the rights to it, and then they sell it to the New York Times or to AP or to Reuters or to whoever else. Um, and they actually used our, our first beta, and they loved it. And they keep you know, asking us, when are we going to um, fully release, which is in two weeks, by the way. You should sign up at grasswire.com. So is this all dynamic, as in your best of, is, do you, any of you guys hand pick that, or is it entirely automated? No, so it's entirely automated, and it's, it's like Reddit. So it's the, the aggregate of what everybody's saying. Um, so me personally, I can't even, infl well, I could, but I don't influence the site any more than any one of you could. So it really is crowdsourced in the purest sense. And if you join, do you have to choose to share a particular tweet, or does it automatically aggregate what you've tweeted and put it on the site? No, so how it works is you, you request a hashtag or a search term, and then we start pulling that in for you. Um, just because of API limitations and because we're not ready to scale yet, we're not just letting you create your own. Um, but so say, for example, Grasswire has three events happening. Um, you can see those three events, and right now we'd probably be parsing something about NSA, something about Egypt. Um, if anybody knows what's going on in Bulgaria, there's some crazy stuff going on out there right now. Um, but that way, everybody who's watching that event is watching the same information. Does that make sense? So you guys potentially can pick up where Google Reader left off. Sorry, say that again? You could, you could pick up where Google Reader left off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so if you like Google Reader, I don't know. <laughs> I was wondering if there's any uh, reputation system or something like that for people participating. <clears throat> yeah, there's not right now. Um, there could be in the future. We haven't ruled that out, um, but no. <laughs> so kind of the reason that a lot of the sites have the reputation, the, the Hacker News or the Reddit or whatever, is so that you're incentivized to come back to the site and to contribute. Um, we have not had any issues with that. We put up a really bad version of it, and you know, we had more people than we could possibly support on our develop dev servers from day one. Um, so for us, it's just a matter of, of getting it out. Yeah. 
have to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you funded? When does the money run out? And what do you need help with? Um, so we are completely bootstrapped to this point. We won some random business competition in Utah. We took like second place behind a popcorn seasoning company. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm 100% serious. And right now I'm living in the back of my Honda Civic. And you know, Garrett has an apartment. So we're completely self-funded. And we're looking to raise a half million dollar seed round in the next little bit. So, nice. Uh, what year? What year? The Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should say we're looking to start raising. Awesome. We're out of time. Awesome. Thank you. Grasswire. <laughs> All right. Next up is uh, Julian. How do you pronounce your last name? Impossible, even in French. Really impossible. <laughs> Which one? It's Dennis. It's Monsieur Julien. Anyway, um, Julien is from Switzerland. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, and he's going to show us Logger, which is an awesome solution for uh, your password management. Whenever you're ready, Julien. Hi everyone, I'm Julian, and tonight I'm here for, to make you forget all your passwords. I'm really serious, I want you to know that your life can be easier without your password. Um, let me ask you just one question. Uh, how many accounts or uh, login do you have? Can you just imagine how many? 20, 30, 50, 1,000? Um, how many passwords do you have for all these accounts? How many different passwords do you have? Two, three, are you lazy or do you have many passwords? So you have to work with an Excel spreadsheet or maybe a password manager. Actually at Logger, we deal with no password at all for all your accounts. As you can hear, I'm not from here, I'm, I'm from Switzerland. It's a very tiny, tiny country. Uh, tiny and uh, we produce cheese, mountains, chocolate and banks. And I have a very short story about bank. I moved to the US last year, and um, actually I opened a bank account. And it, I was really impressed, it's, and a bit confused. It was easy, I just had a login and a password. So it was easy, but uh, I had some doubts about the security. And uh, actually I got hacked. My account was hacked twice, and my money was stolen. So it was okay, it was a, I was a fraud victim and the money wa went back. I don't know if it happened to you, anyone in the room. Not maybe necessarily your bank account, but maybe your email or social network, whatever. And uh, actually it happened because my password was stolen. And uh, in 2004, Bill Gates said that passwords are dead. And nine years later, we are still using password, right? At Logger, we are not using password at all. So I will do a demonstration. Um, just to prove that I'm not using my account, I will choose someone randomly in the list, so here. Is that okay for Luis Albanese if I pick the name? And let's say that I'm a client of Chocolate Banking, a really serious chocolate bank in Switzerland, and I want to create a new account. This is the first step. So I will create a new account by putting the name here. See, I don't have any password field, right? And I'm just putting my email so I can receive my login, actually. And as we are not working with password at all, we want you to use something that everyone in this room has, I'm sure. It's your smartphone. So I'm coming back to my chocolate banking account. And instead of having a, a password field, I just have a QR code. So I will display my screen here, so you can see that it's not fake. I'm just launching the Logger application, and by scanning this QR code, oh, actually, I just forgot something, excuse me. I receive my QR code by email, my login, so I will scan this login first. Sorry. Okay, demo effect, yeah. So 
So here I have my account as Luis, and I just save it. And now in my account list, in my logger application, I have two different accounts, so Julian and Luis. Let me come back to the Chocolate Banking website, launch the scanner again, and scan this QR code. I can choose which one I want to log in. I will choose Luis, and without touching the keyboard of my computer, I will be logged in on this website, on this computer, as Luis. So here I just created an account, and I logged in without touching my computer at all, only by using my mobile phone. It's not magical at all, just a bit, actually. It's working like the Hollywood movies where the US president has a key and someone from military has the other one. So you have a key, we have the other one, but it's not password at all. Um, today, uh, we are announcing that we are launching our Android application on the Play Store, so you can test it, you can play with it, and give us feedback. The iOS and Windows Phone uh, application are in the publishing, so status, we are waiting for authorization. And we are looking for developers, we are looking for B2B companies to, who want to integrate our technology, and we are also looking for investors. Our vision is that in the future, you don't need to use any password at all, so maybe you can just say, okay, Glass, connect, just by looking at your screen. And the goal of Logger is just to make your life easier and more secure. Nice work. I got a quick question. Uh, what about Facebook login? Now that everyone seems to be using that, how does that affect this? Yeah, actually, we would like to integrate different platforms like Google, Facebook, um, LinkedIn. Now Amazon is even doing that. And so you'll be able to log in on a website because they are providing you know, uh, Facebook Connect, sign in and so on automatically. So you will be able to log in just by scanning your QR code and choosing from your Google or Facebook or LinkedIn account directly on your phone. So we would like to integrate all these social, they are called identity providers, and we would like to add them as well. I'm back here, guys. If you have questions back here, raise your hand. Anyone, anyone? How do you get paid? Um, actually, the company that will integrate our technology, uh, we charge them per number of keys we are generating for them. And um, yes, that's it. We are just generating keys, and based on the number of keys, we charge them by fork of number of keys. I've got a question in the back. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing with um, expanding your brand and your marketplace? Um, actually, today we are just starting with the authentication, but we already see a lot of different situations where um, this, this kind of technology could be used. For example, just imagine that not to authenticate, but you are, uh, you are doing a transfer, a money transfer on your bank account. Instead of uh, just clicking, yes, I submit this bank account, you could have a second step verification. So it could be done with this, the same technology. So we are not only doing authentication, but we are doing transaction as well. Not only money transaction, but all kind of transaction. For example, you just arrived at your home, you want to open the door, but yeah, you don't have your key or so on. You could use your phone or your Google Glass, for example, whatever, whatever wearable devices, and you can just open your door. That's the same, actually, for your enterprises. Julian, are, so you're, you're, you're a Swiss company, but are you, are you planting roots here, or are you just visiting? No, actually, we, we are based in San Francisco. Oh, good. And we would have uh, another office in New York as well. Good for you. Yeah. Um, so I think the obvious question is, like, what happens if your phone gets lost or stolen? Yeah. But I think there's an easy answer to that. So what happens if your servers are compromised and those keys are exposed? Because exactly. typically a password is encrypted, but what do you do in the case of a key where someone could just take it and spoof it and then get in? Okay, so if the, your phone gets stolen or lost, actually you just have to contact us with uh, an email that you, you used for your logger application. And as we know your email, we know your, the phones or the many devices you are using with us and we can just disable the keys we are on our side because they are different from the keys you have in your device. And as the key cannot work with, without each other, 
then if we disable our keys, your phone, even if it's stolen, then it's worthless for the, for the hacker. Um, then you get a new phone, and we provide you with new keys for your new device. That's it. So if our service gets hacked, actually, um, then the hacker has keys. But the public keys that the hacker will have are completely useless because we are not storing the keys you have in your phone. The, these two keys, when they are generated, it's a one-time thing, and only you get the keys you have in your phone. We don't store them at all. Um, sorry, so um, what's to pre if somebody hacks the email account, uh, what's yeah, to prevent actually, them from disabling actually, your actual the, phone and telling you to, to send, uh, send them a QR code to allow them to enable their phone? Actually, the, um, the email I just received when, when I registered, I scanned the QR code, and this action can only be done only once. Actually, if I try to scan the same QR code I received by email right now, the application will not work, because the code, the, the content of the QR code you are scanning is just a new URL that will provide your keys. But this URL can only be called once with your phone. So actually, you can delete this email. It will be useless after you scanned it. Yeah, um, actually, we hope that you will send us an email as soon as possible. Um, Security. Ah, yeah. Uh, actually, we do. We do. Um, we are not automating the um, um, uh, deprecation of the keys just by email. Before deprecating, we make sure that you really lost your phone and your, that your email has not been hacked by someone else. Else, so we try to make a very a, a, a human verification before disabling the keys. Yeah, for example. Is that scalable? Sorry. Is that scalable with yeah, with potentially actually, millions of users? Yes, actually, um, uh, our logger service that communicates with all your application is in the cloud. So uh, today we are working with Microsoft Azure, but uh, actually it could work with any kind of services. So we already plan the technology to be scalable. Very good. Well, we're out of time. So, thank you. Logger. <laughs>
uh, Resio has developed a uh, transaction management platform uh, that automates the entire real estate process for agents and clients. So we automate all the paperwork, workflow management, task management, messaging, notes, all that kind of good stuff. So everything, sorry. So everything that happens in a real estate transaction, we automate through the cloud. So if you're a real estate agent, and that's who we sell directly to, you can create transactions in our system. You can e-share and e-sign documents and create workflows and all that good stuff. So actually, let me dive into a transaction that an agent has already created. So we have our documents section right here. You can see all the transactions, uh, transaction members here. You can hover over them to see who those people are and what role type they have within the real estate deal. You can easily add them by clicking here. We have a DocuSign integration directly in our product. So you can click on a document. You can click Get Signatures. You can choose what kind of document it is. For example, the purchase agreement and say I need John and Uma to sign it. Click Submit. And then DocuSign's interface is actually going to pop up right in my screen if the internet is not so slow. And then I just do what I would normally do in DocuSign, dragging and dropping signatures and clicking Send. And then those two people receive email notifications letting them know that they need to sign these documents. And this is a lot better than having to go through every single contract and document via paper, email, scanning, signing, faxing, and so forth. So complete, unlimited cloud storage of documents, sharing, e-signing. Of course, we also have workflow management, so you can create tasks and assign them to each person in the transaction so the buyer isn't clueless as to what comes next in the process. Same thing for sellers and other parties. You can also... Uh, see a, a streamlined activity feed, time, date, stamp with everything that's happened in a transaction. So from a compliance standpoint, a broker can manage all of their agents and make sure they're doing exactly what they should be doing for each transaction. We also offer notes, messaging, all that great stuff. We currently charge $15 a month. There's 2.5 million real estate agents out there. However, we don't actually care about that $15 a month, nor do we really care about trying to sell this product. Why? Because as you can see with this product, we are collecting some awesome real-time data on every single property that comes through our system, data that nobody else has. So Zillow and Trulia, they pull their data from the MLSs and county records, which are not updated in real time, and which are anywhere from two days to two weeks old. And two days old matters, because in two days, a property can go from being not for sale to being for sale, or even being not for sale to actually being in contract. What happens? Buyers miss out. Buyers miss out on all sorts of properties when they search on products like Zillow and Trulia. With our product, we know the second a purchase agreement gets signed and it goes into contract because it happens right in our system. And so what can we do with that? We can actually create a more real-time, accurate property listing than Zillow and Trulia have. For example, this is a real property that came into Resio a couple weeks ago. And as you can see, it's active contingent, it's no longer accepting offers, and it's 3,314 square feet, $250,000, all that kind of stuff. Exact same property on Zillow, not for sale. So if you search for this property or you search in the Kingsport, Tennessee area two weeks ago on Zillow, you missed out on this property. Guess what? Trulia, same thing, not for sale. Public record, but nothing telling it's for sale. And it says it's 2,614 square feet. No, it's 3,314 square feet. And guess what? I trust the listing agent and the information they inputted into our system that this is correct. So what's happening here? You're searching for properties on, on all these other websites. You're not getting accurate data. You're missing out on properties. That sucks. We have that real-time data that we can use to build a better search portal, and then from there, offer listing agents marketing and lead gen products of anywhere from $300 to $350 a month. That's the average that Zillow and Trulia currently charge for their marketing and lead gen. And instead of plastering buyer's agent's ads on the side of these listings, the buyer can contact the listing agent directly, which means the listing agent can end up getting double the commission and being a dual agent for this uh, particular property. And if there's, say, 10 buyers that are interested in this property, only one gets it, the listing agent can then become the buyer's agent for all those other nine buyers, generating tons of leads for them. So, as you can see, with our accurate data and real-time information, we can crush Zillow and Trulia and offer a much better search experience for buyers and a better product for listing agents. Nice work.
to the second. Oh, Ooh, that was a good time. Uh, are you trying to be a CRM system? And if not, how are you going to coexist with the CRM system? Yeah, so as part of the lead generation uh, product, so all the transaction management uh, tools and products that I showed you right now, this has launched. We have over 1,200 agents using this product, been doing very little marketing. This launched three months ago. And then the next piece that we're building out is the marketing piece that will be ready in about six weeks. And yes, as part of that, there's going to need to be CRM, so of course that the agents can manage the leads that come in. Um, so to become a search portal, you have to have some pretty gnarly scale as far as acquisition of the real estate agents themselves. Um, how, how do you go about that, or are they just, is it not an issue? Well, so our product is on par, if not better, than a couple of competitors in the transaction management space, namely a company called Dotloop, which has been around for about three years. Uh, they have 150,000 agents currently using their product, and they're charging $15 a month to use it. So um, our product is just as good, if not better. And what we're going to do is we're going to give the transaction management part away for free, um, and then just upsell on the marketing and lead gen part. So we feel very good about the fact that we can, in about 12 to 18 months, get to about 150,000 agents and between half a million and a million properties. And that would be about 20 to 25% penetration in the market, um, which you know, is very solid. And from there, um, we obviously can offer the search part to the buyer, but we could also potentially sell this data to the 900 MLSs across the country, as well as the 900 publishers like Zillow and Trulia. So there's a lot of options and ways that we can go with this once we build up that inventory. Mark, how many agents are in the system now? Yes, so we launched this a few months ago. We have over 1,200 agents, uh, over 1,800 transactions. Uh, again, very little marketing on our part. It's almost all word of mouth, because as you can see, you can actually invite other transaction members into the deal flow. So we have a lot of agents inviting other agents into it to conduct the transaction. Those agents go, hey, this is cool, and then they start creating their own transactions. Is that so, your marketing strategy, word of mouth? Uh, that's part of it. Obviously, that's the organic strategy. Um, actually, Google AdWords is surprisingly effective, and I'll tell you why. Because brokers are legally responsible for their agents' actions, so agents are required to work for a broker. And so brokers are constantly looking for tools like this to better manage their agents. So they're constantly searching for uh, paperless real estate office or online transaction coordinator or real estate transaction management. Um, our CACs are pretty low. It's about 20 bucks, so we're profitable in month two. Uh, and then we also do a lot of in-person networking and sponsorship events just because real estate agents are very face-to-face uh, -face type people. I see that you used Kingsport, Tennessee, at the, the agent from Kingsport, Tennessee, which is northeastern Tennessee, not a major metropolitan area. Does that mean that you see more traction happening from those types of geographic areas, or are you focused on major metropolitan? Everywhere. So we have real estate agents from all over the country using the product. However, you bring up a very good point, is that this can be a huge uh, market potential for uh, off-market properties. In other words, properties that never even make it to the MLS. The MLS, Zillow and Trulia, they never even have these properties get in their system. We do. Why? Because the agents care about using this transaction management platform to manage their deals. So while we do have agents in major metropolitan markets like San Francisco and New York, we also feel that for off-market properties, our product can be a huge advantage over anything else out there. Do you work with the likes of a Redfin? Uh, so Redfin is uh, very different than Zillow and Truly in that they are actually an online brokerage. So they are a broker serving customers, charging them percentages to sell their home. What's interesting about Redfin is that they don't actually cover every market because they have to be a licensed broker in the markets they do cover because they're a brokerage. And so that means that if you search for a property on Redfin, you'll get even less properties coming up in your search results than you would on Zillow and Trulia. Because in Redfin, with Redfin, if they're not a broker in that actual market or a licensed broker in that actual market, they won't even have the property on their website. So very interesting dichotomy uh, between that. So yeah, it's even worse on Redfin. Do you have a relationship with Brad Inman yet? With who? Bradley Inman of Inman News. Yeah, so we have good relationships with the uh, editors and writers over at Inman. We've definitely had a lot of stories written about us so far. You can just Google Inman and Resio and you'll see a lot of stories come up. Um, we were actually at their Inman Real Estate Connect conference a couple weeks ago in the Startup Alley. Um, yeah, so I mean, we were, def we were actually nominated for uh, one of the Inman Innovator of the Year awards. Uh, we didn't win, but we were nominated. Um, but yeah, we definitely have those relationships. All right, last call for questions. Who's got the last question? Anybody? Over there. Go ahead, shout. 
Well, real estate and easy, Reese, but that wasn't available, so we added a no. Was that it, or is there one quick one? Was that any other questions? That's one it. last one. All right, out of time. Mauricio, I'm sure we're going to be hearing about more, more about you later. Okay, Jason and Jeff, come on up. This is FlexScore, everybody. Visit them in the back. They've got plenty of literature I'm sure they don't want to go home with. Right. <laughs> And then we'll be doing shots off at their table ball. later today. Shots, shots, shots heavy, shots. right? Yeah. I'm sure you had Sarah carried in too. Hey, uh, first person to guess Jeff's height gets a free drink. Yes. Somebody, yes. anybody. And you buy me one. I heard a six six. Six six is short. I heard somebody said six it. nine. Six nine. Holy moly! You get a free yeah. drink. Hey, the next game we're gonna play is how much does Jeff weigh? Yeah. <laughs> So let me tell you a little bit. Our parent company, while we're getting set up here, our parent company, he's going to need a stand on top of that as well, is Fat Donkey. So my last name is Gordo. His last name is Burrow. And in Espanol, that's Fat Donkey. So together we make up the team Fat Donkey. And we are proud to present FlexScore, which is financial advice for the rest of us. I'm Jason Gordo, the CEO. And this is my personal bodyguard, Jeff Burrow, <laughs> and the best business partner a guy could have and the president of our company. So what have we done? We've taken the complex personal financial planning, which is what our background is in, and we've gamified it. What we've done is we've tied together a number of industry standards, assigned a scoring system to, that, to those industry standards, and as a user comes on and fills out their profile, they tell us a little bit about themselves, and they tell us what they want to achieve financially. And based on that information, we give them, through our patent pending algorithm, a single financial health score to focus on. And today, we're going to get into the actual logged in web page. This is Mr. Blow, Joe Blow. And his financial score, or his details are his assets, his debts. He's going to tell us a little bit about his cash position, his debt situation, what he wants to achieve in the future as it relates to his money. And then we put a score to that and customize action steps to follow to achieve that score over time. So Mr. Blow, his score is 536 today. And we get this by a data aggregation tool. So he goes on and tells us his usernames and passwords to his bank account and his 401k and his IRA, his credit cards, and we're able to aggregate all that data and then come up with a score based on his future goals. And that's his flex score, 536. So if we scroll down, we can see his customized action steps and what he needs to follow based on his personal situation to achieve the goals that he set for himself. So let's click on one of these. Let's actually go through an action step. How about refinance credit cards? So again, his score was 537. And he has two credit cards, a dis well, actually he has three. He has a Discover, a Chase, and a Capital One, and he's paying higher than market interest rates on all those credit cards. So we know if he refinances those credit cards, he's going to lower the cost of debt payments each month and be able to put more towards his 401k or that bigger house or that nice car or educating the children and grandchildren. So let's click through the debt. Let's assume that we went to Bankrate, which is one of our product partners, and we selected a credit card. Well, we're going to show you the impact on the score just by changing the interest rate on the credit cards that he already has. So like the Capital One card, Jeff, we're going to change his interest rate from 16% to 5 So we've changed the interest rate on two credit cards. That should have a positive impact on his flex score. So let's go and see. This is live. Let's see what happened. Joe Blow, financial accounts, Oops, hold on, let me see. Chase, Discover, Capital One. As Jeff does that, as he, these are live action steps that we're adjusting to adjust the score. We also have a really cool peer ranking component where you can say, hey, I'm a 32-year-old, I'm in San Francisco, and I make $150,000 a year, how do I stack up versus another 100 people in San Francisco? Am I number one on the list, or I'm 
am I number 99? Where do I rank versus the Joneses? Because that's what we're all trying to keep up with. But in this case, we put positive attention on doing the right things financially, so you're improving all the time. One of the things that's interesting as well is it's financial literacy. So all the studies show that the more literate you are about your finances, the better you are off. And so that makes sense. But if you want to find out how to do better on your credit, we give you direct access to our learning center. We curate all of the information out there in the world so you don't have to go to Yahoo Finance or some of the areas that you can get information. We tell you exactly what you need to find out. So you go through here, you read the articles, and you instantly earn points. Now, you're not going to get 25 points for reading an article, but you might get five. And that immediately gets that feedback in front of you. As opposed to having to wait for your credit score to go up, you get a little feedback immediately. When your credit score goes up, so does your flex score. So let's see if we can get this done here. Did I already click that one? can't remember. So in addition to the peer ranking, we have a what-if calculator where you can model a future financial decision. What happens if I buy the 5 Series BMW versus the Honda Accord? What will that impact my financial score? What impact will that have on me financially long-term and my ability to achieve financial success? So it's flex score. I know we got delayed on the start there. It's flex score, financial advice for the rest of us. We're hiring, we're looking for engineers, and in the back is our table. We're startup based right here in San Francisco at Second and Howard, and we're not your daddy's financial advisor. We've never played the back nine, we don't drive BMWs, we don't collect nice scotch, and we don't smoke cigars. Flex score, we'd love to meet you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Good stuff. Hands up high for flex score. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask. So folks, uh, they, they have a love-hate relationship with their FICO score, right? Yep. It's something that they wish they didn't have to check up on. Are you just adding another number into people's lives that they just don't want to know about? We're adding a number that matters. Your FICO score only matters when you go to borrow something. This number is representative of what you want to achieve financially, how you want to do financially, and what you need to do to achieve those goals. So it's based on 1,000 points. It's a patent pending algorithm. And those action steps get you closer to success. So when you score 1,000, you don't have to go to work tomorrow. That's the objective, is you want to get to 1,000 points because that means that you're financially independent based on the goals that you established and set for yourself. I have two questions for you. Uh, the first one is, how, how close is the score to the FICA score? It's not close at all. No, oh, I see. It's in the back. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's based entirely on different things. In fact, the FICO score, I, I gave that as an example of one component of your uh, overall flex score. But it takes a look at a lot of different data points. In the financial industry, for example, you can sit down with us. If I'm an insurance advisor, then I'm probably going to be looking for insurance policies for you. But if I'm doing my job, I should also ask about debt. I should make, uh, uh, take a look at your savings, for example. And so it is not at all like the credit score. They're both numbers, and that's about the only similarity. Uh, for example, one of the things that you would want to do is get to 1,000. But people assume if you're Bill Gates, you know, the guy's already got 1,000, right? He's got all the money in the world. It's not about money. It's about the whole picture. What if he didn't protect himself against huge losses, right? Maybe he doesn't have a will in place that tells everybody what's supposed to happen upon his death. These are all things that he's supposed to do, but it's things you're supposed to do too. You know, if you're married, if you have children, if you have any assets at all, even if you're not married with any children, if you have assets of over 100,000, you should think about more than just your income. So it's a holistic approach, and it gives you a, a, a score to look at, which encompasses everything. Yeah, is there another question? Well, I was just wondering what the business model here is. The business model? Yes. Okay, so we're direct to the consumer. That's, a, that's the first piece of the business model, is a uh, revenue-sharing agreement with platform partners. So if you need to get your credit check, for example, you can go through our credit check company and get that done. Or if you need to refinance a mortgage or invest money. Um, that's one way. Another way is direct licensing of the score to major banks, lending institutions, and broker-dealer networks so that they would use it with their clients as an engagement tool. Remember, we've gamified financial planning. We've made a really boring and stale subject fun 
and engaging. So that's what a bank wants or a major financial services company wants is engagement with their client, and that's exactly what we've built. And then long-term, direct to the financial advisor community. Yes, sir. So I see that uh, the numbers seem to be fairly high for net worth, and of course, most of us are dot-com millionaires. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what are some of the beginning numbers to invest in, in with a product like this? Is that instead of, say, $300,000, it's more like twenty-five, and then 5000 a month or 10000 a month. How does one be able to get a start or a leg up in something like this? Yeah, perfect question. And, and we come from a high-end financial planning background at a major Wall Street firm. And they serve the ultra-wealthy really well. But there's about 75 million Americans in this country that need, demand, and should have really good financial advice. And when we were Wall Street firms, if you didn't have $250,000, we didn't get paid to help you. And we charge more. That's right. We charge as much as we could, which is like 3% in those big brokerage firms. Here, if you have $1,000, we can help you. It's not about how much money you have. It's about what you want to accomplish financially. Asset management is only about 30% of what we do. The rest of it is, do you have the proper insurances in place? Do you have an estate plan? Do you, if you have children, are you planning for their future? Uh, asset management is just a piece. It's not the way we make money. It's a piece of the pie. This service is free. I don't know if we might have just overlooked that entirely. This is free. And so even if you have no money and all you want to do is pay down debt and find out about other parts of your uh, position right now in life, if you don't have a lot of assets to invest, the service is free. We're not going to charge you because we still make money through revenue sharing with the services that you're going to have to use to improve your financial position. Now they're fighting over the microphone. Hey, uh, quick question. How do you integrate with sites like Mint and then because the financial industry was such a high-touch industry, like we went in and talked to our brokers, uh, how do you guys see that evolving to us just going to your site and learning it on our own? Yeah, it, again, we come from a, a mahogany desk, plate glass window, cigar smoking, back nine playing, you know, whiskey drinking over lunch culture. And that's really the average financial advisor is 59 years old, and 88% of generation X, Y, and millennial recently stated that they would fire their parents' financial advisor and look to online tools for, for help. They want advice and help. And you asked where we, you know, where, how we integrate or, or differ from Mint. We really take off where Mint leaves off. Mint wants to help you lower your cost to monthly debt obligation, tell you how to refinance a credit card. We want to help you achieve long-term financial success as defined by you, not by a credit card company or mortgage provider. Another question? Yeah, last question. They're fighting I, again back there. I got the. Um, do you guys offer any, like, I know you guys are in beta, but any, like, workshops or just to kind of, like, a sit down, offer lunch to local SF people to be able to kind of see how to use the product, what are the benefits of it? And a lot of us are incubators of what other people would look for to be able to use a product. I think that might be kind of helpful. Yeah, we haven't done that, but it's definitely in our fall plans. And if you hand Sarah, who's right behind you, your business card, we'll make sure you're on the invite list. And we'd invite all of you. If uh, That's Sarah right there. You're pointing at her. That's Sarah. And remember, we're hiring engineers, and we'd love to connect in a marketing event and a, uh, you know, come tell us what you want to know, yeah. and we'll help you. Thank you. There's, there's a code, right? There is a code, an access token. Yes, sir. What so is it? It's SFNT something, but I forget. Sarah, do you remember? What is the access token, Sarah? Oh, my goodness. SF <laughs> Tech Flex. If you guys want to become beta members, just email us. You guys ready for this? Come get our card. We also have a book that we've written. It's back there on the table to tell you all about the store, but it's SF Tech Flex. Flex. That's we need to work on to access tokens. Could have made it easier. And jobs at flexcore.com. If you're an engineer, we're looking for those guys too. So send us your resume. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys very much. Thank you so much. Flexcore. <laughs> right on. Okay, guys. So the demos are over, but we're going to keep you hostage just for a couple of minutes more. Let's do, uh, I'm going to pull up the mobile vote. Uh, and while folks are, uh, are uh, chiming in on that, uh, let's do the 60 second spots. Uh, I'm not going to record them online this time, just because, but uh, this is uh, good to uh, promote yourself here in this room because there's still a lot of uh, 
Heavy rollers, big rollers. What do you call those guys? Heavy rollers? High rollers. Wells. Yeah, oh, whales. The whales want to hear from you. Anybody have anything? We'll just screw it if you guys want to do this. This is your opportunity. I've, I've been up on, come on up. I've been doing this all night long. Hey, um, my name is Greg, and um, I'm, do you mind? Sit here. Okay, <laughs> cheers. Um, I, company called EVAT Solutions. Uh, we provide a, a EU VAT compliance platform for uh, e-service providers. Anybody that sells uh, digital goods through the net, uh, you kind of need our platform uh, to be compliant to sell into the EU. So uh, any of you that are thinking about um, Europe, um, you need us. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Greg. Michael. Hey guys, I'm Mike. I never thought I'd be up on this staircase here. Um, I'm working on a hosting and site optimization service called Bitballoon, and the reason why we're building another hosting and site optimization service is because uh, slow websites really suck, and it might sort of suck if you're in San Francisco because your internet's probably pretty fast and you got a 4G phone, but um, a lot of people don't have that fast of internet, and it's a big problem in the world, actually, especially for people who are just getting their first smartphone and getting online. And so what we're doing is making it extremely easy for anyone who wants to build a simple website who can code a little bit of HTML to deploy their sites by just dragging and dropping it onto our app, and then we'll do all the stuff you need to do to optimize your site, which, frankly, the top 100 websites out there, I think over half of them aren't even doing this stuff. So you'll basically have a site that's faster than probably 99% of the sites out there without doing any work. What's so, the name of it? Oh, <laughs> it's called Bit Balloon. Bit uh, Balloon. Bit Balloon, just like you say. And we're in a private beta right now, but um, you're all invited. Uh, the access is bitballoon slash beta, and the password is SFNT, just like the tweet hashtag. And I did tweet it to the hashtag, so you'll see it there. Perfect. Yep. Good stuff, Michael. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Awesome. Anybody else? Hey, guys. My name is Mark. I uh, just want to put a plug in for a meetup that I help organize. It's called SF Cybersecurity. So if you're interested in cybersecurity, uh, please check it out on Meetup, just SF Cybersecurity. Our next event is August 8th. Basically, we just get together and uh, at a bar and talk about the latest exciting trends in malware and APTs and that sort of thing. So if you're interested, uh, you're welcome. We'd love to have you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Anybody else? Anybody else? Um, so I have a um, company called Macoscope. We do iOS projects and also OSX projects. Uh, so everything on iPad, iPhone, or Mac. Uh, we're hiring developers, engineers, designers, but also looking for new, new projects to work on. So we also work with startups and early stage companies. So if anyone uh, has some work to do, some nice projects to work on, we are happy to help. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Your future, your future is Thank bright. Anybody Who's up else? next? Anybody? Anybody? Going once. Else? Going twice. Okay, let's switch it over to the results. Sure. Matt, you have something to say. Uh, yeah, are you guys done voting over here? Maybe? Uh, here's a quick whip. I'm not sure if that's the right word. But uh, thank you for coming. And we really appreciate you guys. That's about it. Uh, this is a good community technology. If it's not this company that you are working with and want to work with somebody, it'll be one in the next few years. So just be nice, be kind, respect others, and make some money. That's it. All right, these are some early returns. It will refresh. For those uh, voting for a flex score, get your votes in so they can go home with something. Oh, the number. You oh, guess. yeah, back. Hey, somebody vote for a school boy. You're going to hurt his feelings. He's going to get a live update in his Google Glass 
while he's driving, <laughs> he's going to be hurt. Please. It's free to participate, you guys. Don't, don't, uh, don't fret. Also, we're going to send an email asking for some feedback, so you'll receive another, yet another email from us uh, sometime tomorrow. Please respond to that one as well. Um, and I'll make a point to give you a discount to our next event if you do respond. How does that sound? Speaking of which, our next event is on August, I want to say 21st. Uh, we still have a, a room for another demo or two, so if you're working on something great, want to be up here, let us know about it. Matthias. Just visit our website. There's a link on the top that says uh, apply to demo. I even sent my friends there, so don't email me. You guys got your votes in? That's it? We're done? I'll vote it out. Here we go. Move it over. Win a win a win. Oh, Scoble. Hey, buddy. He probably voted for himself. Do, 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 oh. do, 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 do. There you see. So we'll watch this through the night, but I'm going to have to say that Riccio took it home. What do you say about that? Ah, it's close. Or maybe not. And Port is going to... Uh, yeah, let's, let's give it a little bit. A minute. We'll give it another minute. Sorry, Riccio, but it's... Just tie. I see because the grass wire guys. Grass wire just recruited the whole state of Utah yeah, to start voting right. for him. <laughs> I don't think you can. You can try, but you can try no. it. That's cheating. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this right here, my friends. So I, the I, next time around, we're talking about money. So people will be voting with their dollars. All right, we're gonna do a ten-second. Countdown. Okay, so while it's going, let me just tell you quickly other things we have going on. Uh, we're going to do the first ever Korean-style tech night in September. Look forward to that one. Uh, it's not a done deal yet, but we might do a special, another special event with Flurry, who are great, great people. Uh, that'll be in the fall. Another thing that's not inked just yet, but we're looking to help out the city and uh, Mayor Ed Lee. October is Innovation Month here in San Francisco, you may have heard. Uh, and we're trying to put together a startup crawl for them so uh, we can all visit uh, various startups throughout the city that will culminate to a nice keynote, maybe with the mayor himself, uh, and a nice happy hour. That'll be in October as well. Uh, I think in December we want to do another crazy invention night. Uh, last year we had full-on vaporizers on stage. Uh, <laughs> It was highly technological advanced vaporizers that Matt demoed for everybody. That was a great night. This is crazy. You get neck and neck. All right. Import IO, if you get us one more vote, we'll call it a three way tie. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's call it a three way tie. Well, it's only fair. Two way first until Import IO gets one more. And it might not happen. All right. Three. Two, two one. five, four, three. Let's two. call it. That's Let's it. call it. <laughs> Matthew. Oh, and one last thing. Who needs a, a video done of their startup? Who needs some video assets to really help them move the needle? Talk to our friends, Jimmy from Q. There. Yes. Uh, he's got cards ready to be given away with his picture on it, so you can remember him forever. Uh, Jimmy G at Q. The letter Q. There. Dot com. Email him. He's got an awesome studio right by Moscone with a green screen. He can do high-tech work, multiple cameras, HD, you name it. And he's a good guy to know, a good guy to work with. So thanks to Jimmy for your stream. And uh, you guys definitely look him up. Find me later. I'll give you this card if you want. It's a two-way it, tie. It's a two-way tie. We're going to see you in, uh, in August, yeah? Hey. Thanks for coming down. We love you. You're the best.